Coming up on today's show, Tesla buys an ultra-capacitor firm in the form of Maxwell Technologies, an electric version of the Ford F-150 may be closer than you think, and we discover just how much of an impact the Tesla Model 3 and other plugins have had on Toyota Prius sales. These stories and more coming next. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to wherever and whenever you happen to be in the world. Yep, I just dug that out of the closet from 2013. It's time for another weekly roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation. So let's get going. Tesla announced plans this week to acquire Maxwell Technologies in a deal estimated to be worth 218 million US dollars. Known for its ultracapacitor technology, it's one of the world leaders in the sphere, Maxwell is no stranger to lithium ion batteries either. Last year, it published a paper on so called dry electrodes for lithium ion cells that offer superior energy density and enhanced battery life, something that probably piqued Tesla's interest in an acquisition. At the same time, ultracapacitors could lead to reduced charging times for future models. The Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance is in the final stages of talks with Alphabet's self-driving arm Waymo regarding a collaboration into self-driving car services. That's according to sources close to the companies in question, who told the Nikkei this week of the discussions. Nothing has been officially announced yet, but given that both Fiat Chrysler and Jaguar Land Rover have worked with Waymo in the past, a tie-up with Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi doesn't seem all that far-fetched, especially if, as rumours suggest, the tie-up is involving autonomous taxi and autonomous mobility services. Tesla has begun official deliveries of Model 3 in Europe, and this week we've already heard the good news that European spec Model 3s are happily charging at CCS quick charging stations at power levels in excess of 110 kilowatts. While deliveries to mainland Europe are underway, however, all Model 3s being delivered do have autopilot turned off, despite Model S and Model X having autopilot in the EU. This is a temporary hiccup caused by the type approval process, where it seems the car itself is type approved for sale, but autopilot type approval for Model 3 hasn't yet been completed. For the last few months, we've heard plenty of rumours about a possible electric version of the popular Ford F-150 pickup truck. This week, a spy shot of what appears to be a camouflaged prototype plug-in F-150 attached to a charging station surfaced. While there appears to be a tailpipe on this vehicle, it may not be real. Automakers have used fake tailpipes before to confuse spy photographers. And the cable plugged into the truck's front bumper seems to be thicker than the standard level 2 cable you'd expect of a plug-in hybrid. As usual though, I can't share the photos here, but I've linked them in the show notes. Nissan's NV200 minivan will become an all-electric model from the end of this summer. Sort of. That's according to Nissan, which says that demand is high for its electric NV200s, but not for its internal combustion engine variants in Europe and Japan. We know for sure the ENV200 will become the only choice in European and Japanese markets, but upon reaching out to Nissan North America for comment, I wasn't able to get a confirmation that the same was true on this side of the Atlantic. Since the NV200 in North America has a different set of drivetrains and engines, and isn't offered as an electric model, the jury is unfortunately out on this one. Honda may only have one electric model on the market right now, the short range Honda Clarity EV, but it's been talking up its future electric car plans with increasing energy for the last year or so, at the same time as cooling down its hydrogen fuel cell vehicle enthusiasm. This week, it made the next step towards an electric future by signing a memorandum of understanding with the Chinese company CATL, that's Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited, to purchase a supply of 56 gigawatt hours of lithium ion batteries for use in its vehicles by 2027. The agreement is primarily for Asian market manufacturer of EVs. Ahead of its planned initial public offering, rideshare service Lyft has gone one step further from last year's commitment to becoming totally carbon neutral. It's giving customers the ability to specify an electric or hybrid vehicle for their next ride. 
called Green Mode. Lyft riders in Seattle can now request their Lyft is in a greener car, but the option will be rolled out to other cities. At the same time, Lyft has also expanded its driver programs to allow Lyft drivers to rent an electric car with unlimited charging included, helping them to lower their operating costs and green up their service. As Tesla Model 3 sales have risen in the last 12 months across the US, Toyota hasn't been shy in admitting that its Prius liftback has been feeling a massive drop in customer interest. This week, however, we learned how bad that drop was in January alone, with Toyota publishing sales data that shows it sold less than 57% of its Prius liftbacks in January this year when compared to last. Toyota Camry sales also fell. While it's likely that Model 3 did have a massive impact on this, it is worth noting that SUV and pickup sales are on the rise across the board due to dropping fuel prices. But it is time to get more plugs on things, Toyota. Electrify America announced this week that it will be adding Tesla power packs to more than 100 of its electric car charging sites across the US. The goal? To help smooth its own grid draw at high demand sites. This will help Electrify America avoid some of the demand charges that come from pulling high currents from the electricity grid on an irregular schedule. Each site will have a 350 kilowatt hour power pack installation that will be capable of delivering a peak power of 210 kilowatts. Due to the modular nature of Tesla's design, more power packs can be added in the future as required. Continuing its drive towards a more affordable Model 3, Tesla announced a $1,100 US dollar price cut on the current entry-level Model 3. Uh, that's the Tesla Model 3 mid-range, not the standard range. In current levels of US federal tax credits for Tesla customers, and what he says is, quote, fuel savings, Tesla CEO Elon Musk says the Model 3 now starts at approximately $35,000 which, to be frank, is a little creative in the mathematics department. That said, it does show that the more affordable $35,000 before incentives standard range Tesla Model 3 is inching ever closer to production. And now it's time for our short shorts. Electrify America has announced the second round of its charging infrastructure planning program, promising expanded DC quick charging as well as inner city charging programs for many new metro areas around the US. Interestingly, it will also add two DC quick charging stations built for autonomous cars to use. BMW has teased photos of its iNext electric SUV undergoing cold weather testing north of the Arctic Circle. It's not clear if the iNext shown is a test mule based on a BMW X5 or a pre-production body, but it's certainly a lot more conventional than the iNext concept car we've seen to date. Green Car Reports, the news website I first cut my journalistic teeth on writing about electric cars, has just celebrated its 10th birthday. In the last decade, it's been a standard go-to for the latest in cleaner, greener car news, and I'm proud to be part of its alum. Happy birthday, guys! In a similar vein, our buddies over at Fully Charged celebrated hitting their 50 millionth view on YouTube this week. That is an incredible achievement and just shows how much Robert and his team are doing to educate the world about electromobility and renewable energy. Congrats, guys, and here's to 100 million views. EPA Acting Administrator Andrew Wheeler has stated this week that it's not the EPA's role to promote a particular type of fuel, such as electricity. The question was asked in relation to the EPA's attempts to roll back fuel economy targets for cars. If cleaning up the environment isn't part of the Environmental Protection Agency's role, we're still waiting to find out exactly what its role is. Tesla customers in China found out this week that they'll be getting their Model 3s with enhanced autopilot enabled for free. It used to be an added extra, just as it is in other markets, on top of standard autopilot features. This news does suggest that Tesla might soon do the same for other markets. At the start of this week, Tesla launched a new store on the Amazon website where customers could buy Tesla merchandise, uh, but not a car. It then pulled the shop back down before launching it later this week. So if you want a Tesla branded iPhone case or wallet or t-shirt, you know where to go. A fight has been brewing this week between the AAA and Tesla after an AAA press release said that electric cars can lose as much as 41% of range when the temperature outside 
is well below freezing. Tesla disputes the claim, and I have made a video on cold weather and EVs that you can watch. I'll link to it below. The US District Court of New Jersey has ruled that a class action suit against Mercedes-Benz can move forward for allegedly using emissions cheating devices in some of its Bluetech diesel vehicles. The case claims that affected cars emit as much as 83 times the legal NOx limits. Representative Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Markey have unveiled the new Green Deal this week, an energy policy which, if passed, would commit the US to switching to 100% renewable energy by 2030, support more clean energy jobs and development, invest in infrastructure and sustainability moving forwards, and secure clean air and water for all. It's one to watch. Meanwhile, however, Senator Barrasso, someone that we've talked about before, who is well supported by the oil and gas industry, has called for the end again of federal tax credits for electric cars. In an opinion piece this week, he argues the same old anti-plug-in rhetoric and calls for a tax instead. He's already introduced a bill into the Senate. GM CEO Mary Barra says that GM will begin a turn of profits and its electric vehicles early next decade. While that may seem a long way away, it's worth noting that the next decade technically starts next year, so it could be closer than some commentators would have you believe. US charging network EVgo has increased its charging fees for electric car owners, with price increases dependent on the region of the US that you're in. It should be noted that while some EV drivers are currently upset, EVgo actually lowered its prices last year, so it swings and roundabouts. Unless cities implement congestion pricing, our roads could get more congested as autonomous vehicles appear. That's the message from UC Santa Cruz's Associate Professor of Environmental Studies, Adam Millard Bell, who says without them, self-driving cars will drive in circles all day rather than pay to park. He might have a point. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Mitsubishi's Outlander plug-in hybrid has been a popular choice for plug-in customers in the UK for many years, but now there's a commercial version for Brits to drive too. With rear seats removed and the interior toughened up for commercial use, Mitsubishi says the commercial Outlander plug-in hybrid will be great for city deliveries in zero or low emission zones, but if I'm honest, I can see plenty of other applications for it too, like the many rural veterinarians who need vehicles capable of off-road driving but may also want to do their bit for the planet as well. Thanks to UK commercial vehicle plug-in car grants, the on-the-road price for this new workhorse is just over £25,000. That's a lot cheaper than the passenger version. Chevrolet might get criticised for not doing enough to promote its Bolt EV electric car, especially in some US markets where the pickup is king. But this week we learned an ongoing fuel shortage in Mexico has meant that Chevy has been pushing the Chevy Bolt EV really hard. One of its tricks? To bring the Bolt EV to gas stations where people were waiting for a chance to fill up. Add that to a social media campaign targeting those fed up with all the fuel shortages, and Chevy says it's seeing some significant new customer interest across the board. And finally, Arkimoto, the Oregon company behind the two-seat, three-wheeled all-electric trike that it likes to call a fun utility vehicle, or FUV, has been slowly ramping up its production lines for the last year or so. But now it's announced a new special edition of the same called the FUV Evergreen Edition. More expensive than the standard model, it has heated seats, heated hand grips, Bluetooth speakers, removable doors, and lockable rear storage. The price? A cool 19,900 US dollars, which, if I'm honest, it makes it a whole lot less interesting than it would have been if it was just $10,000. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. And don't forget to like, comment and share, bash the notification bell. And if you want to support our network, then you'll find links below to Patreon, Ko-fi and our shop where you can buy yourself some TE swag like the t-shirt I'm wearing. And if you want to chat about the show, then there is a Discord server that you can join too. There's also a link to that below. I'll be back next week with more news, reviews, and insight for you all to enjoy. But until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and don't forget to be better, kinder, and smarter to one another. Keep evolving.